everyone and welcome back to another video or welcome if you are new. Today we have a, not a long awaited video because I feel like that makes it sound like everybody's been asking for it but a video I've been wanting to do for a while and a video that some people have suggested that I do. Right, we're going to do some little bit of a backstory first if you are new. So, I have a dog called Oakley. I would get him up but he's in a little bit of a huff right now. Come on. <laughs> so I was trying to take the thumbnail picture with him and he didn't like that I pushed him off after having his picture took. I didn't push him off but you know what I mean, I asked him to get off and now he's just like no I'm not coming back up. So I'll try and get him up at some point in the video but he's being huffy. Come on, come on. No, he's having none of it. So I have a dog called Oakley, he is a Cocker Spaniel and I have been documenting, showing him on the channel since the day we got him. The vlog is there of when we got him. So literally, he has been on the channel since we got him. And went through a bit of a rough time with it. I had a pretty bad first year of ownership. It, it, it didn't go well. And one of the main reasons that it didn't go well I think is me being autistic and I haven't been able to talk about it before and how much it interplayed because when I was posting about Oakley's first year and about how much I was struggling about it I hadn't received my diagnosis yet and I just didn't feel comfortable talking about it yet so I think that it it made things more challenging more difficult it made things different to what other people have with dogs and I had a lot of people commenting at the time being like, you're doing fine, don't worry about it, but it's just, it's not that simple. Autism really did affect and still does affect having a dog. So I'm going to run through today the reasons, not the reasons, the ways that it has affected me and how it can affect other people because I'm assuming I'm not the only autistic person that has these struggles. It's just I haven't really seen anyone talking about it. I would like to say straight up that this, I would like to keep this a no judgment zone. The stuff that I'm going to go through might be difficult for people to hear. Uh, not like, <laughs> I'm making it sound a lot worse than it is, but some people are very, very judgmental with dogs and think that if they aren't the centre of your universe, you shouldn't have them. So if you feel like that, <sighs> you can watch the video, but please don't comment saying that I'm a bad owner. Please don't. And by the way, if I get anything like that, I am deleting it because I spend far too much time hyperfixating on it. So yeah please don't judge me i'm going to try and explain things as best as i can but let's just get on with it i do have a list on my phone that i'm going to run through right i am going to go through them just as like a list because i haven't been very well so i'm not mentally at the top of my game i have a headache <laughs> so i'm just going to go through the list and chat them as we go and also that explains if subscribers have noticed i feel a bit Talk, I'm talking a bit like nasally. I'm still recovering from a cold. Anyway, right. So first up, have very high expectations for ourselves. This is, I, I'm pretty confident, something that nearly everyone with autism struggles with. And I know that a lot of people have this, where they set very high expectations and then they don't meet it and feel bad. But it's it's pretty it's pretty bad in autism. I've been told by everyone that I have too high expectations of myself, and that goes through everything, including owning a dog, and it also ha it is included for myself and other people, and other people includes Oakley here. So I have very high expectations of myself of being like bang on it with everything, like. I wanted to be the best dog owner you could ever have and I wanted to have the best behaved dog you could ever have. Not that I expected that from him straight away or without any work, but I was expecting to be training him all day every day and he was going to behave really well after I'd done this training and it just didn't go like that. And I know this sounds, I'm going to try and think about talking as to a neurotypical person so if you're autistic I'm assuming you get it <laughs> but if you're neurotypical it might uh, it's hard to portray it as hard as what it actually is but it literally feels like the end of the world and it feels like I am a complete failure because I haven't 
it hasn't gone the way I've expected and that was happening every day. It still happens now, that's the thing with all this stuff, it's still happening now. It's just, I keep thinking back to the time where I was like crying nearly every single day. I was getting so much hate on the internet because of the crate training I was doing with Oakley. And that's what springs to my mind and that, that was literally every day I was crying for these reasons but mainly because it wasn't going the way I hoped and I felt like a failure and it all came down to me and that was all <laughs> all of it all the way through it was all my fault and the thing is I this I'm gonna come on to it in another point but a lot of dog trainers on TikTok on YouTube which were the main places I was using for learning about dog training were they were saying it, everything comes down to you as the owner. The dog isn't responsible for anything. Everything comes down to you. you. If the dog's bored, it's your fault and stuff like that. And I take that very personally. So everything was my fault. Like everything was my fault. And it wasn't just like me being like, oh, well that's me, I've done it again. Every single thing was my fault. Like I took everything as a negative thing. Not a broad sweeping thing. We are very, very detail, like detail oriented, <laughs> orientated, oriented, oriented. Every single thing that went wrong was my fault, and it just piles up and makes you feel like crap. But we just we set these incredibly high expectations. Even when I knew I shouldn't, even when I knew training a dog was really, really hard. But you see the trainers who do it, and they do everything successfully not like the dog does it successfully but they do it successfully they keep their temper they train around the issues that come up in the training sessions i was like well that's going to be me even though i've never owned a dog i've never trained a dog i was like that's going to be me they make it seem so easy they make it seem like you are going to be able to do exactly what they are doing and i couldn't because i i don't know what i was doing wrong but i was doing something wrong so that was my fault and it just those I don't have a solution when I'm coming on to these points. I still don't have a solution. Everything. I still have way too high expectations when it comes to me and him. Taking... Oh, you might come up now. Do you want to come up? Come on. You go. Where are you going? Do you want to cut the window? So this is Oakley. <laughs> he's crying because he thinks his dad's coming home. He's not home yet. Anyway, I still have it now, but... So I, please don't expect a solution, but it's just something I have to be aware of. Uh, and yeah, so we have had way too high expectations. When I say we, I'm talking about autistic people, by the way. Right, next one. Hi, baby. <laughs> what are you doing? Logic is difficult to overcome. So when training has been done, it's difficult to know why it's not working. So like I said, autistic people, we tend to be very detail oriented we are very logical in our thinking. If it's not logical, we don't understand it. It's, it's pretty much how it goes. So, when I have spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of training this boy, and then he still gets it wrong, <laughs> I don't understand what's going wrong. He has had so much walking training so much. Why is he still getting it wrong? I don't know. I don't know. And I know that's me because trainers say it, it's all down to you, it must be something I'm doing. But I don't understand that when I'm doing <laughs> everything that the trainers say to do and then he's still not getting it, what am I doing wrong? What's happening? It's very hard to come to terms with that and to just not get caught up in it. I'm not saying I don't get caught up in it, I do. I get very, very angry, but it's just another thing. Like I say, there's no solutions. This still happens. I can't stop my brain from being like, well, why isn't it working? And I am like that with humans as well. Like, don't get me wrong. If um, Jack or people don't understand things after a while, I get frustrated with them, but he's my dog. <laughs> So there is no explanation. There's no further explanation as to why he's not getting it. Are you getting comfy? Sorry, am I in your way? Get your bum down there. There, is that better? Do you like it? 
Anyway, I don't feel like there's much more I can say. I feel like I'm just gonna end up talking over and over points, so I'll move on. Uh, the black and white thinking. So I'm either a good owner or I'm not. And a lot of the time, I'm not. I don't, I, the majority of the time, I wanna say, are you bringing something up? What are you bringing? The majority, the, most of the time, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying most of the time, but all of the time, I pretty much group myself into I'm a bad owner and that affects my self-worth and my mental well-being a lot and it's it, and I know people who are subscribed who are my lovely lovely subscribers be like oh but you're not you're not um or like you just sometimes it could be that you make bad decisions or it could just be sometimes like that isn't how it works in my head I either am or I am I'm not and in my head I'm not a good dog owner and that is rough, like it's rough. I feel like the majority of the time I am not providing a good home for him and it's it's rough, It's it really really hurts and I have to try and convince myself that I am or that it's not black and white but my brain doesn't think like that. It's like, but you're a bad dog owner though. So it's rough, isn't it? Next one is, it's hard to know what he wants when it's not obvious. So when he needs the toilet, he makes it very obvious, don't he? He goes and stands at the back door. And when it's food time, it's obvious because he's due his food. When he wants a drink, <laughs> he's got a button to press. He goes and presses his button when he wants a drink. When it's not something like that, where I know what's wrong. Excuse me, this isn't the Lion King. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah that's better. That's good. You like that. When it's not obvious what he wants, <laughs> I don't get what I'm meant to do. I don't get it. Like, I don't understand what I'm meant to do. And it really, really stresses me out where it's, it's at the forefront of my head. This is another point that I haven't written down, is that, like, I struggle with animals anyway. I struggle with the concept of animals. I struggle with understanding what their head is doing. I don't understand what their life is meant to be and I know that sounds so weird if you're neurotypical. I mean, I don't even know if all autistic people feel like this to be completely honest, I don't think I've raised it with other people. But I struggle with what his life is meant to be as a dog. I find it a bit strange that this is just an animal that I have in my house and this is what he is. Like he isn't, he, <laughs> I don't know if people are gonna find me crazy. Um, if he, like he, he doesn't leave the house unless we leave the house. Like, his life is literally dependent on us, and that freaks me out, and I find that really, really weird. So, <laughs> when there's something wrong, or when he's just standing looking at me, and I can't ask him, what do you want? I feel so guilty that I can't give him what he wants, because there's no way of communicating that to me. And it freaks me out, I can't just let, like, I'm better at it now, because he does just go off by himself, but... In the beginning, when he used to just stand and look, I'm like, well, I need to figure out what he wants because this is his life. Like, his life is literally just in this house and obviously when we take him out. So, I was just like, but so what am I meant to do with him? And I'm still like that now. You've heard him crying. He cries a lot. Uh, we've had him checked by the vets. He's fine. But he cries a lot and I'm literally like, but I don't know what I'm meant to do. And obviously I have Jack as well. So Jack takes it a lot of the time. But, baby, you're too big to be a lap dog. Don't lick mum's mouth. Don't lick mum's mouth. Don't lick mum's mouth. Yeah. So I just get a bit freaked out, confused, stressed about what I'm meant to do when, <laughs> when it's not obvious what he wants. Next one is probably one of the biggest ones in it is that I get frustrated very, very easily. It's, it's a known thing in autism, I think, that we get frustrated very easily, we get angry very easily, and we like get this pent up energy. And it can be a meltdown, it can be a mini meltdown, it can be a shutdown, but I get frustrated so easily. My temper is very, very short and I know some people think that makes me a bad person and it makes me think that I'm a bad person and that I should be more patient. I can't, like, I literally, I don't know how to describe it apart from it feels like something's building up in my chest and I just get so angry. Um, so... That happens a lot with him, especially when physical stuff's happening. And by physical, I probably mean sensory. So when he yanks on his lead, that pen, like that literally, like I get so angry from that physical sensation. When he's crying, 
I can't deal with it. Like he cries and it, it gets to me and I just get so angry and I'm just like, what do you want? And I get, I just get so frustrated so easily. And I just want to clarify, I have never hit him because I know that it sounds like that would be really easy to do. That Like I feel like anger and frustration is so like, equated to abuse sometimes like it feels like if you see someone getting angry then they have to be abusive i have never hit him like no but i've never hit you have i i've never hit you you tell them no no so i get angry and it normally the the, the normal thing that like gets it out of me is making a noise and it's never like in his face or anything like that like I hope it's I hope I'm making it very very clear that I'm not abusive towards him but it, normally it's like a oh that's what normally happens um I have shouted in the house but not at him I because I, I don't want to be stared at in the street I'm already stared at enough when we're walking back and forward a million times aren't we people watch us so in the street it's normally like a, oh and in here I'm just like ah like it it I try and release that but I don't think there's much I can do. I am, I'm managing it. I would say I'm managing it because like, like I say, I've never hit him and that all like scared him because I've seen people with their dogs scare their dogs and that breaks my heart as well and I've never scared him. The only like time I'd say that maybe I went too far was when I used to like yank on his lead upwards but a trainer actually told me to do that. Um, so, I'm sad that I used to yank so hard upwards and I'm sad that a trainer told me to do that but this is coming on to another point but there's so many trainers telling me to do so many different things it's really hard to know what to do because when like I'm so detail orientated why do I keep saying that wrong oriented I don't know which is the correct way of saying it when it's so when I'm so detail I'm gonna change it to focus when I'm so detail focused it's really, really hard to ignore some details. And what I mean by that is picking which one I want to do. And even with that, like the things in that, because obviously there's like positive balance and then I don't know what they call the, <laughs> the physical one, but I very much have done like positive reinforcement training with Oakley. But then within positive reinforcement, there's loads of conflict and stuff as well. So it's just hard to understand which detail to go for and then ignore the rest and it's just really really overwhelming because it's not it's not like I can just see the big picture and know what big picture I want to go for I can't do that like I have to look at the details and it's just so overwhelming there's so much to look at and I still don't know what to do that's kind of why I've gotten off training so much because I've seen so many good points but then some of the good points like conflict with the other good points so then I'm like but what do I do and then I just shut down so yeah th that's another point <laughs> next is if I get angry or frustrated it's not easy for me to snap out of it so I've mentioned before that walking okay is quite difficult for me and I struggle with it because of like what I've just said like the pulling and stuff but for me, it ruins my like entire day. I find it very, very hard to snap out of moods when I get into them. So when I'm frustrated, it'll just put me in a bad mood or it'll overwhelm me and I can't really get out of it as easy as what other people can. Like I've noticed with Jack, Jack can just be like, all right, well, it didn't go well. And then that'll be it. For me, I'm just like, that's it, it didn't go well. He's a bad dog, I'm a bad owner, I didn't do it well. I deserve to be miserable the whole night. And that's it for the whole night so we try not to do structured walks too much because I just end up in a terrible mood and if it goes well I'm absolutely buzzing because then I don't have to be in this terrible mood all night so it's just it's not as easy for me to just snap out of it as it is for other people it seems this also relates to another point that I had was that so during that time where it was very very hard like that year when I was getting all of the horrible comments because of the way I was crate trained in Oakley. So I, I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning. I crate trained Oakley 
like where what a lot of trainers say where you put them in the crate and only bring them out when you're doing like interaction or engagement or um like training enrichment things like that and a lot of people really really didn't like it and I got a lot of hate comments for it they were super hard to ignore because I will believe so it's hard to describe I am quite gullible like I will believe people I don't understand whether they're being sarky I won't understand caveats like if someone like commented being like you're a bad dog parent and then Jack would be like yeah but they're not seeing all of it I wouldn't think of that caveat I would just be like right okay well I'm a bad dog parent I will listen and it just really really got to me because I just believed everyone and I didn't have those things that people say to themselves where they're like but they're not with you the whole time and they're not doing this and they're not there like I was just like, yeah, I'm like everybody's everybody's looking and everybody knows, um, and obviously I was telling myself that as well. So it was very very hard to overlook those comments, and it it might have been harder for me than it might have been for like a neurotypical person. <laughs> so I feel like this next one, when I was writing them, I felt like this one was going to be the most controversial one, and it is that my very black and white thinking means that his cuteness doesn't really mean much to me. I understand that neurotypical people, and I, I've seen this with Jack, where they are like, oh, but he's so cute. I don't have that. It doesn't interact with me. I can, like, I have an objective, like, yeah, he's cute, he's beautiful, he's a gorgeous dog. But that, I don't, in my head, that doesn't mean that he isn't misbehaving. So, I think that is also con a contributing factor to the like I don't snap out of it type thing whereas Jack when he misbehaves we get angry with him Jack's just like oh but he's such a cutie I don't have that I'm just like he misbehaved he's pissed me off like that's it uh I feel like people aren't gonna like that but I just I don't I don't have that in me I don't know I'm assuming it's an autism thing because it's a logical thing in my head it's just like I don't have the emotion of like he's adorable don't get me wrong I love him like I love him and that interacts, but I don't have the, he's cute so I forgive him <laughs> type thing. But remember this is a no, we're not, we're not gonna judge me. Last one is sometimes I just don't have the energy or mental space, space to deal with him. And I think that's a very com like not common, uh, I feel like it's like a kind of a common sense thing where it's like I'm autistic, of course I'm not gonna have the energy to deal with him, but I just, I've mentioned it in my other videos, but I don't think people realise how much autism affects you physically and how much it tires you out and like I literally sometimes feel like I'm too tired to do anything just because of I've been out in the world. I'm sorry baby, I've got a dead foot, I'm gonna have to move you, I'm sorry, you just stay there, you stay there, stay, stay, stay nice and still. Go back to sleep, go relax. And I didn't think about that going into buying a dog. I know, I know some people are going to be like, well, why didn't you think of this before you got a dog? I, I should have. I 100% should have, but I didn't. And I have him. So these are just things that I've got to combat. I do try and combat. Anyway, I just didn't think about how knackered I am some days. I just thought, oh, I'll be fine. I was one of those people that was like, oh, well, I'll take him for a big walk and he'll be knackered. <laughs> you're not are you you're not and I know people hate me for not doing research like really really in-depth research before getting a dog because we did do research we just didn't do the proper proper research on cocker spaniels but some days I just can't deal with him not deal with him and like be in the same room with him he's with me all the time we are in the same room all the time unless we are leaving him <laughs> Okay, can you relax again, please? But I just didn't think about how much mental space he was gonna take from me. And a lot of the time, I just can't deal with the training. I deal with him in the way that I have to deal with him in terms of like, I'll take him out for a wee if he needs a wee. He gets his food all the time. And obviously Jack is here as well. So Jack takes over a lot of the time, but there's the guilt of not being able to do stuff all the time like I, I the way that I did the first six months of owning Oakley which if you guys have been around for a while you might have seen where we did so much training 
it just wasn't sustainable for me and I wish I could do that every day and I feel like neurotypical people may be able to do that every day and I'm so jealous I wish I could do that but I just don't have the mental capacity to it it's more the when I say deal with I don't know how else to phrase it because deal with isn't what I mean it's more just like work around like so if he starts not misbehaving but if he isn't understanding what I'm meaning in the training sometimes I just don't have the mental like load to figure out what to do to make it better if that makes sense if he behaved exactly like he was meant to in training sessions it would be fine but it's the thinking on the spot it not going the way I planned that I then have to deal with that really, really, I, I can't do. <laughs> and the, sometimes the idea of doing that, so going for a walk, I just, I can't put myself through it because if we go on a walk and it doesn't go great, that's me for the night, like I'm overloaded because he hasn't, like he's pulling on me, I'm trying to figure out what to do, if people are, if people are letting their dogs come near him, stuff like that, I've got to deal with people. So sometimes the idea of it, I'm just like, there's no way. Like, there's no way I can do it. So it's way more tiring than I expected. And I do feel guilty about it, but I just can't deal with it sometimes. And I don't want people to worry for Oakley's safety because I know people worry about dogs not getting enough exercise and mental stimulation and stuff. I am in a dual household. There is somebody else here. So it's not all reliant on me. So he's fine. But... It's just something else that I have to struggle with. That is all of the notes that I had. Uh, it's by no means exhaustive. There's probably stuff that I've forgotten or stuff that I just haven't realized as a specific to autism thing. And I hope everyone understands what I mean in this video and doesn't take it to be like, you shouldn't have your dog. Please don't comment that because I've had those comments so much and it, it doesn't make anything better. Oakley is cared for, he is loved, he gets enough energy out of him, he gets enough mental enrichment, so he is fine, he's just not getting as much as I hope he would when we got him, and that's rough, so yeah, I hope he's understood what I meant, and I hope this has been some consolation to other autistic people, I tried to find other people like me in the beginning and I couldn't find anything about autistic people and pets so I really hope this has helped autistic people if you are struggling you are not alone it's freaking hard owning a dog and I wish people with autism saw more people talking about how hard it is so you don't feel alone if you want to talk about it feel free to message me I'm more than happy to have conversations with people but that is going to be it for the video. I'm sorry if I've been monotone. Like I say, I'm not mentally great at the minute. So trying to put on my normal fluctuation of voice has been difficult. And also my nose is just a pain in the ass. So I'm sorry if it was boring. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please make sure to leave it a like, comment, subscribe if you are new. And I will be hopefully back to my normal bubbly, not monotone self in another video. So thank you so much for making it at the end and I shall hopefully see you again. Bye.